Well, welcome back. This is our second lesson on adding and subtracting real numbers. So I have two learning targets for you. Pretty straightforward to add real numbers and to subtract real numbers. So we keep talking about these real number things. What is a real number? Hmm. Well, I want you to stay tuned. We're going to talk about that in lesson number five. So I'm not actually going to give you the answer in this lesson. You may already know, but that's okay. So what is absolute value? We're going to start off talking about absolute value of numbers. And the absolute value is basically the distance from zero on a number line. The symbol that we use is vertical lines, Okay, these two vertical lines. And that means find the absolute value or the distance from zero on a number line. So if I have the absolute value of 5, how far is positive 5 from 0? Well, it's 5 units away, right? So that tells me the absolute value of 5 is 5. What about negative 5? How far is negative 5 from 0? It is the same distance, right? It's also 5 units. You can't have a negative distance. So absolute value is always positive. Addition and subtraction on number line. So the way we model addition, if we're adding a positive number on a number line, we're going to move right. If we're adding a negative number, we're going to move left. Subtraction does the exact opposite. If we're going to add, excuse me, if we're going to subtract a positive number, we're going to move left. And if we're going to subtract a negative number, we're going to move right. Let me show you what I mean by this on a number line. So I have the first example is negative 3 plus 6. How do we model that on a number line? Well, we start at 0. The first number is negative 3. So we're going to go left 3, and that's where we end up is at negative 3. Then we're going to add a positive number. We're going to go to the right. Okay, So from negative 3, we're going to add 6, and we end up on positive 3 right here. Okay, So that's our answer. How about on this other problem on the left? See if you can model that one on your own. Hope you gave that a try. We're going to start at 0. We're going to go left a distance of 2 units. Then we have subtracting a negative. So up here it says subtract a negative. We move right. So this means we're going to move right 9 units. Where do we end up? We end up at positive 7. So that is our answer. Another way we can model addition of positive and negative real numbers is to use counters. So what if I have negative 5 plus 3? I could take 5 little blocks that are negative. See if I can do this. This takes a little while. Sorry about that. So here's three of these. Two more. Okay. And I could do three plus signs. Now each plus and each negative cancel out, right? So what I could do is I could take this one and delete it with this one. This one cancels with this one. This one cancels with this one. I'm left with two negatives. So I know that my answer to this one is negative two. Now you could always draw that out on your paper. Um, pretty simple problem. I know you probably already know how to do that, but I just want to show you some techniques for um, going for, for uh, finding signed numbers or adding real numbers together. Okay, so I have another example for you here that I would like you to try. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, 5 plus a negative 6. How could you model that using the counters? Go ahead and draw on your own what that would look like with your squares or circles. Uh, you're going to have 5 pluses and 6 negatives. And what do you get your, for your final answer? And you should get a negative 1 left over. So the rules that we have for adding real numbers. okay. Oh, it looks like I have another example up here quick. Here's another one for you to practice. Should get negative 4, right? Rules for adding real numbers. If we're going to add numbers with the same sign, we add the numbers together and they keep the sign. So here we have positive 3 and positive 2 gives us positive 5. These two are both negative numbers, so we add them together and get 5 and keep the sign. When we have different signs, we always subtract the numbers, and we keep the sign of the bigger number. 3 is bigger than 2, so our answer is going to be positive because 3 is positive. Um, likewise, 3 and 2, when 3 is bigger, 3 is still bigger, so this time we're going to have a negative 1. So you keep the sign of the bigger number, always subtract the numbers when they have different signs. So 
little bit of vocabulary that we want to get out of the way here as well. Opposites. What are opposites? Opposites are two numbers with the same absolute value but different signs. So what I mean by that are things like 3 and negative 3. Those are opposites. 6 and negative 6 are opposites. What's an additive inverse then? Well, that's just another name for opposites. That's the, another term you can use for opposites. So just make sure you understand those mean the same thing. The inverse property of addition says that for every number a, if we add its opposite, no matter what order we add them together, we always get zero. And that property allows us to rearrange that the order that numbers are added. That can be helpful to us. So let's go ahead and do some problems here. Let's practice some of these. And I'm going to go ahead and remind you, remember when they're the same sign, we add the absolute values, keep the sign. When there's different signs, we subtract the numbers, keep the sign of the bigger number. What is the absolute value of negative 6? Well, that's the distance from 0 on a number line, and it's always positive. Same thing here, whether it's a decimal, a fraction, a whole number, it doesn't matter. It's the positive value that comes out. Here we're going to find each sum. So we have 17 plus a negative 52. Well, we're going to subtract these numbers, 52 and 17, put the biggest one on the top, and we're going to subtract. We need to borrow, right? 12 minus 7 is 5, and 4 minus 1 is 3. Keep the sign of the bigger number. 52 is bigger, so that means my number's negative. Negative 4 and negative 31. These have the same sign, so we're going to add the numbers. 31 plus 4 is 35, and we want to keep the sign, so it's a negative 35. Negative 2.7, positive 3.1, different signs. Put the bigger number on top, put the smaller number on the bottom, subtract the numbers. Again, remember we need to borrow here, so we decrease by 1, add 10. 11 minus 7 is 4. Here's our decimal point, 2 minus 2 is 0 and keep the sign of the bigger one. 3.1 is bigger, so this is a positive 0.4. What do we do with fractions? Oh dear, we have different denominators, so we need to find a common denominator. Well, if we multiply them together, we could do it that way and make both of them sixths, right? This one on the left, I have to multiply by 3, so I have to multiply the top by 3, so that gives me negative 3 sixths. This one I need to multiply by 2, so I need to multiply the top by 2, and that gives me a 4. So same rule. We're going to have 6 this time. Opposite sign, so we subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 is bigger, and it's positive, so it's a positive 1 sixth. So Daryl walks 10 yards from his house to the bus stop. Realizing that he dropped his keys, he walks back 4 yards. How far from his house is he? Use addition to find how far he is from his house. Well, let's suppose that uh, Daryl's house is at zero on the number line, and he's walking all the way here, and he goes 10 yards, right? So he's at 10, but then he's going to go back this way, minus 4, right? Where does he end up? Well, plus 10 minus 4, subtract the, sign, or subtract the numbers, keep the sign of the bigger one. He ends up 6 yards away from his house. Subtraction, a couple of things to look at here. If you look at, go ahead and fill out this table I have on the left with all your answers. 3 minus 3, 3 minus 2, 1, 0, negative 1. What happens when we get down here and subtract some negatives? Well, here's your answers. The pattern you should notice here, or what I want you to notice here, is that when you subtract a number, it's the same as adding the opposite of the number. So 3 minus a negative 1 is same as 3 plus the opposite of negative 1, which is positive 1. So subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. So let's find the differences here. Negative 13 minus 8. So that's the same as negative 13 plus a negative 8. Okay, and the signs are the same, so we're going to add the numbers. And when we add 13 and 8, we get 21, and we keep the sign, which is negative. Again, negative 32 minus a negative 22. That's the same as negative 32 add, okay, positive 22, the opposite of 22. So this time we have opposite signs, so we're going to subtract and get 10. 32 is bigger, making us a negative 10 for an answer. 
This one's going to be 4.5 plus 8.2, right? Adding those together, I'm going to line those up, and we should get 12.7. Negative 6 sevenths minus a minus. Remember, whenever you have a double negative, that makes it positive. Plus 1 seventh. How many sevenths do we get? Negative 6 plus 1, opposite sign, so we subtract. That gives us 5. Keep the sign of the bigger one, which was 6, and that gives us negative 5 sevenths. Death Valley is 282 feet below sea level. How would we represent 282 feet below sea level? Well, that's a negative number, negative 282. If Brian is standing in Death Valley and he's six feet tall, what is the altitude at the top of Brian's head? So you could think of this like this. If this is Death Valley and here's Brian down here, he's at the bottom of Death Valley. Okay, and this is up at negative 282 up here. And his height right here is 6 feet, right? We want to know what is this distance right here. Well, we have negative 282. We can model that mathematically. Negative 282 is the whole thing. But then we're going to go up 6. So we went down 282. We're down here. And then we're going to go back up 6, right? Negative 282 plus 6 says we subtract the numbers. So that gives us 276, I believe. Keep the sign of the bigger one. So negative 286, how would we say that in words? It's 276 feet below sea level. So to summarize, here's our last slide for you. To summarize what we've learned in this lesson, subtraction can be rewritten as adding the opposite. Addition problems can be rearranged and regrouped. When you have the same signs, you can add and keep the signs. When you have different signs, subtract and keep the sign of the bigger number or the bigger absolute value. That's it for Lesson 2. See you next time.